tonight how to make a homemade clay for you and your family to enjoy. Um, it feels so soft and gentle and easy to ply and shape into fun little creatures and decorations such as these. So it's pretty simple. There's just three basic ingredients. One cup of baking soda, half a cup of cornstarch, three quarters cup of water, mix that in really good, get it all nice and smooth. And it doesn't look like it's going to turn into clay. I, when I first did this, I thought, no way, I don't believe it. But it turns into clay pretty quickly. And then, too, if you want to add, you can add a couple of drops of food coloring just to make it a little different. None of these ingredients are fancy. They're just um, store brand or your basic brands found in any grocery store. We'll heat that up over here on the stove. We're going to heat it up on medium for just a couple of minutes. It goes pretty fast. And the idea is to keep stirring it the whole time. So you can come on in here and look at this and see how it's pulling. You can see it pulling from the side of the container. I'm going to move, mix it and smooth it more and more until it starts to pull together and smooth out. So I'm going to move it and smooth it. I'm lifting it. I don't want it to scorch. So I'm lifting it and there we go. Now we're done. Now we'll go over and work it at the table. Bring it over to the counter, scrape it out of the pan. There we go. What I like about this clay is you can either bake it or just use it as a play dough and use it again and again. As long as you keep it in a covered container, it's soft and pliable. And I don't honestly know how long it lasts, but I'm pretty impressed with the consistency. I've tried a few different recipes. Um, searching online and I was pretty happy uh, with this one overall you know in comparison to the other ones that I tried out so I'm just gonna roll this out across a very clean countertop a nice smooth surface also you know what kids if you're doing this on your own please keep it in an area designated for a creative space on a smooth clean surface do not take it to the couch don't take it to the carpet uh, it'll, it would make a mess like any clay body would. So here I am just smoothing this out, extending it just to cool it down a little bit. It's not hot. It's only warm to the touch. It's actually quite appealing uh, to play with right now. All right. So look at that. It, can you tell that it's just fun to touch and feel? It's holding its shape quite nicely. Now, granted, it's not an earthenware or stoneware clay. It's um, different from that because I'm not going to be able to get things to stand up narrow right away. It's going to want to droop. So we just have to be a little careful about what we decide to make. So I'm thinking I'm going to roll out some coils. Coils are fun. It's pretty forgivable. You see how that one fell apart, and I just pieced it back together. One. I'll make the little bottom so you can take and patty cake out. I'm going to be doing some other videos as well on how to sculpt different shapes and so I'd love you to check those out. And you can use this clay, even though I use uh, earthenware clay in those demonstrations, you can certainly use this homemade clay as well. You won't have to do the scoring and slipping and the hollowing out that I talk about, but you can certainly use the ideas that I show 
for making simple, fun sculptures. So I'm going to make a little kitty, I believe. Just roll that head nice and round, pinch out those ears. And then I have some just utensils here, toothpick. I'll use the toothpick to make some eyes for the kitty and the nose. Fun and strange. Okay, Make the little body. Just by pinching and manipulating the clay and then pushing the parts together, just erased his eyes. There we go. sticking out. There. So you can have a lot of fun um, just making your own projects and different sculptures and then when you decide okay you're done with it and you want to create something else you can because that's the cool thing about this clay. You can squish it back together and try something else. Hi! I feel like making some flowers today. We'll bring a little spring inside and uh, see and make some little brightly colored flowers with our homemade play clay. So first I'll start with, I'll start with the easiest one, the calla lily, the white one here. Calla lily is used for weddings a lot and when my students are kind of stumped and wondering what kind of flower they can make, I like to start them with this because it's one of the easier ones to do. So I always have them start by flattening out some clay. You can patty cake it in your hands or flatten it on the counter on your wear board. And then this tool, all it is is a paper clip opened up and then taped to the end of a pencil. I'm using it to cut a big raindrop shape. Okay, then I'm going to pat the edges like so. So the peak is the top of the flower like you see here, okay? And then I'm going to take some pink and you can, whatever color you have, it could be green, it could be yellow, it could be blue, but I'll take that to make the little middle, middle section and roll the broad base of the petal up around it. And then that looks like a calla lily. So we'll just add that to the bouquet down here. And then another one is a five petal flower, kind of like a daisy, just a very simple flower that grows wild along the woods. My blue clay for some reason ended up a little soft today. So what I did is I sprinkled a little bit of cornstarch and added some cornstarch to it to make it pliable and less sticky again. And so now I can and roll round, roll it round first, and then I go back and forth and back and forth to create that little petal shape that's kind of peak it on one side and round it at the other. And the, the way I do that is I take it, round it, but then I go back and forth on one side. I'm a little heavier handed on one side, and that makes that little peak. So when you flatten it, it keeps that raindrop shape. A little more pressure towards the inside and then flatten it. Put them all together. And again. And of course, you know, petals, uh, as many petals as you want. There we go. And the other one had a white center, so I'll put a pink center on this one. And then again, I'm going to use that little paper clip to draw the little petal lines. 
my blue clay is a little floppier than my other, my pink and my white clay, and all that means is that I didn't cook it as much as I did the other two, and that's fine. I mean, it just doesn't stand up. I would never try to make, well, okay, so now, of course, it's standing up a little bit, but if I tried to make something tall and skinny, it wouldn't stand up, whereas with the white clay, I cooked it a tiny bit longer, and that is definitely standing up. So you have options and variety in what you're making. Um, now I'm going to make a little rose. There's different ways to make roses. There's a really super easy way where you just take clay, flatten it out, and curl it up. And that's a very simple, quick, um, kind of like a color book style rose. But if you want to add to it and go a little bit beyond that, take your pink clay, whatever clay you want, roll it into a snake, flatten it out, and curl it up in the same method as I just did. But then we can take it a step further and roll out separate petals. Make it round, flatten it, and gently attach it at the bottom and let that petal flop. Roll it around, flatten it, attach it gently at the bottom, and again, that petal is gonna flop open. And we just repeat the same steps again and again until it fills into a complete blossom. It is starting to look like spring in here. And one more. I kind of love how floppy these petals are. They're more realistic that way. So there you go. Isn't that kind of cute? A little bit of spring. Thanks for watching.